Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be discussing what would have happened if each sending sister got the throne if Thorne didn't become queen. I know the title says what if, but this isn't going to have the format of one of my regular stories. Instead, it's a discussion as to how each sister would have ruled the kingdom and the long-lasting effects their reign would have had. This video does contain spoilers for all of Arc 1, so if you haven't yet finished The Brightest Night, then please click off. Also, before through the video, a huge shout out to my patrons! Crazy Roblox Man, Drag1195, Springtail Productions, Three Moons, Ortrix, and Just a Gurky. Thank you so much for supporting me. Links to their social medias are in the description down below. Anyways, without further ado, let's get into the video. The first Samning Sister will be assessing its Blaze, who is commonly recognized as the dopiest of the three. Even her allies admitted that she wouldn't have made a great queen, but allied with her out of pity and land promises. And while she was self-absorbed and oblivious of nearly everything going on around her, she wasn't necessarily cruel. Let's say that Blaze has chosen to be the Queen of the Sandwings before Blister and Burn died. In this alternate universe, Sunny never found the Eye of Onyx nor considered Thorn be the rightful queen. Instead, the Dragons of Destiny chose Blaze because they thought she was the least manipulative and cruel. So, how would her first day as Queen go? Well, it's pretty tough to say what would happen with Blister and Burn. If they're imprisoned, they could easily bribe a loyal guard into setting them loose with lies and promises. Blaze wouldn't even consider this as a possibility with her false belief that everybody loves her. She won't ever think for a moment that any of her subjects would betray her because she's that naive. Glacier would be alive, but likely wouldn't be as interested in helping now that she has her land. And instead of restoring peace to pirate through acceptance, things would remain how they were. Everyone would be separated. So if imprisoned, Blister and Burn would easily find some way out and kill Blaze as soon as they got the chance. They would likely have made an agreement to not fight each other until Blaze was dead, then things would become every man for himself. But in the moment, they would create a truce since it would benefit them both during that time. The moment they escaped, Blaze would be dead. I'm not sure if she would even want to imprison them. Blaze would likely do whatever a guard or higher-up member in the palace suggested, without question. So if they decided to kill Blister and Burn instead, and for this hypocult that situation, let's say they died, which would be unlikely, now Blaze is the queen with nobody to rival her. No heirs, no eye of Onyx. Thorn would regain her position as the leader of the Scorpion Den, but with a feeling of emptiness inside of her at keeping that harsh way of life. Thorn would feel pretty unfulfilled and likely be stuck dealing with smaller issues. I doubt any of the tribes would attack the Sandwings then, just because everybody is so early that the war is over and they just want peace for as long as they can have it. But with nobody looking for and embracing equality between tribes, Pyra would still have that tension. Towns like Possibility wouldn't be as populated, and hybrids would be less common because they wouldn't be as encouraged. With nobody to officially fight Blaze for the throne, that's where Vulture would come in. He would hear news of the deaths of Blister and Burn and how their younger sister had gained the throne, and he would determine that it was the perfect time to strike. Vulture would wait just a little bit of time before striking. He would start slowly by having his followers inside invade the palace one at a time, gaining the trust of Blaze, who wouldn't even bat an eye. Eventually, nearly every standing in the palace would either be one of his followers, converted to the cause after being unsatisfied with Blaze's rule, or already loyal to him in the first place. Anyone who didn't submit to him, such as those with higher positions, would be killed alongside Blaze. A rebellion would ensue, ending with the deaths of countless Sandwings, and now with the queen cornered, Vulture could easily deliver the final blow and take the crown. With no Thorn to fight back and no loyal guards to help, Blaze would be dead in moments. And they would have their first king, King Vulture of the Sandwings. It wouldn't be realistic for Vulture to rule forever, especially in a world where Thorn exists and is outraged by all the slaughter. She would gather up all the outclaws and any dragon who was willing to help, and they would storm the palace. Though their numbers would be smaller, they had true loyalty and respect as their advantage. I'm not sure exactly how they'd manage to recapture the palace, but Sunny would be overjoyed that her mother overtook Vulture, delivering the final blow to the defeated tyrant. Humble Thor would be shocked at the idea of becoming the next queen after Sunny would suggest it, but nearly everyone in Pyre agreed that the leader of the rebellion that saved the kingdom was perfect for the job. This is how I think things would have gone if Blaze became the queen. I'd try to tie Thorn into it somewhere, that way the main story could still go on with little to no changes. Plus, I think this would have been super cool to see Thorn defeat Vulture like that. Just imagine her telling him his reign was over, but Vulture just laughing. Suddenly, Thorn would jump towards him and stab her venomous tail bar right through his heart. Vulture underestimated her, and that was the thing that'd be the end for him. So, we've talked about Blaze, but what about Blister, the middle child? Let's say the Eye of Onyx chose her, and when Thorn touched it, she was the one to turn to dust. Obviously, Blister's unworthy, but we'll be getting to that later. Everyone would be shocked. 
And with Burn already being dead by the Dragonite Viper, it would leave only Blaze, completely unprotected. Blister would kill her younger sister immediately, not even hesitating. This part is pretty tricky because I'm not sure exactly what she'd do next, especially regarding the Dragonites of Destiny. I assume she wouldn't want to let them live, not risking imprisonment in fear of someone betraying her or letting them loose. But to avoid a bad public image, she would likely refrain from killing them for the time being. After all, Blister doesn't want to look like the villain. If you're going to manipulate people, you don't want them thinking you or your intentions are evil. If Reverend has accepted that she is their ruler, Blister would do some drastic measures to make sure any of Blaze and Burns' allies didn't turn on her. In silence, she would torture anyone who swore their allegiance to one of her sisters, ensuring that they wouldn't try anything against her. After all, Blister supposedly had some effective torture methods during the war. I'm sure anyone who dealt with her would be too horrified to speak up. She wouldn't want to kill them, because doing so would be wasting pure standing blood, something rare those days. Blister would become a dictator without allowing anyone to give her the title. As a queen, she would try to make sure every other Pyrene queen wouldn't attempt to betray her. Blister would promise them land, peace, and treasure if they agreed to never cross her. She would use her lying lips to trick and manipulate the weak while controlling the strong. Pyra had no other choice. They had just gone out of a war, and they needed all the money and resources they could get. As much as everyone hated Blister, they didn't want another war, and she promised them great things, right? She couldn't be that bad. Or at least, that's how dragons in faraway tribes thought. But to those living in her own kingdom, they lived in fear of their queen and didn't dare speak poorly of her. Nobody liked Blister, but they didn't even, even dare say it. Every queen was stuck. They were in a time of despair after a 20-year-long war, and they had no other choice. While nobody really wanted to side with her, they really couldn't do anything. Now, getting back to the part about Blister not being worthy. I think the story ending with her ruling during a time of unrest would be accurate, but not quite satisfying. So instead, what if the Eye of Onyx changed its mind? What if, after all this, it found her to not be worthy? Each line, each drag manipulated or tortured or relieved of becoming angry and distrustful of the one-head crown queen. Blister wouldn't notice it, but with each horrible thing she did, the Eye would get just a little hotter and shine just a little more, slowly killing her. Until, when things got to be too much, she would be engulfed in its heat and lightning, turned to dust like Thorn did all those months or years ago. And finally, we saved the oldest for last, Burn. In this story, Burn didn't get bitten by the Dragonite Viper, and nobody knew of the existence of the Eye of Onyx. Imagine Burn dodging the Dragonite Viper. Blister, in all her joy in thinking she had bested her sister, would suddenly be shocked that she would see her oldest sister stomp on the last Viper. Both her backup plans, dead. Burn would want to make things fair by having the three sisters fight for the throne. Blister would agree, but deep down she knew she could never take her sister in a fight. And so, the two standing sisters would duel in the arena, pounding each other against the sand. The fight would take longer than she anticipated, but would end swiftly with the final blow being delivered to Blister's side. Her last words would be of her remarking how Burn would die soon, unloved and not respected. Knowing her connection with Oasis, she would make one final comment, laughing manically about how Burn would end up just like their mother, and she hoped she did. Blaze had been watching on in horror as Burn would say she was saving the best and easiest for last. She would kill her youngest and now only living sister easily, a display of her power to gain the respect of those she had lost on her side previously. Bird wouldn't hesitate on killing the Dragons of Destiny. Unlike Blister, she didn't care about looking bad in the public eye. She would kill them in the arena after expressing her excitement for them all to end up on her wall. Nobody would dare rival Burn. With her show of power, no queen dared to rebel, and no guard needed to be convinced not to turn on her. She would rule for her entire lifetime, though it wouldn't be a long life because of the injuries she would obtain in battle, and would die forever being known as one of the cruelest queens in Pyra. And anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. It was incredibly fun to look at all the different things that could have happened if Thorne didn't become queen. But anyways, what did you guys think? Let me know down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!